hiding behind government secrecy once again. Congressman Trey Gowdy represents South Carolina. He chairs the Oversight Committee in the House of Representatives, and he joins us tonight. Mr. Chairman, thanks for coming on. What did you, you watched yes, the interview. What did you learn from it? A um, couple of things. Number one, the page in Strzok, he would have fired immediately, which means the two agents that were leading both the Clinton and Trump uh, right. investigations uh, should have been canned. Uh, Director Comey's uh, recollection is flawed. If he does not remember telling Congress that his agents told him they didn't think Flynn was lying, then he needs to get his lawyers to go back and look at the transcript. Um, we did not mishear. Maybe he misspoke. Uh, but that's in the transcript. And, and the double standard that he's had for the last couple of weeks still exists. You know, Clinton can lie and she ought to be president. McCabe can lie and he's still a stand-up guy. But Trump, boy, if he tells any lies at all, then impeachment is too good of a remedy for him. And that dangerous Martha Stewart who went to prison for lying, and he brags about that in his book, right? Um, he doesn't remember a lot. He doesn't remember when he first heard about the Steele dossier. He doesn't remember who told him about the Steele dossier. Is that plausible? No, because um, he knew that Republicans paid for it, even though that's inaccurate. So w w if he learned about it in the fall of 2016, then it was already known that the Democrats had picked up on that work. So who, whoever briefed him, why would you just say the Republicans started it, but, but not also include the Democrats finished it? So right. that, that and, and, and the, the part about it not being part of the FISA application, not a significant part, then Tucker, why did you use it at all? And I've actually read the application and, and he's just wrong. It was an indispensable part of the application, period. So how can he claim otherwise? I mean, his first reaction was, I don't think that's been made public. In other words, you can't prove me wrong because you and the rest of the civilians asking these questions, the American citizens here, don't have access to the relevant information. But as you just pointed out, you do, you've seen it. That's not true. This forms it. a central part of the request, correct? Um, well, uh, there are three parts of it. This is one of the parts. They led with it, um, and if my recollection is correct, it occupied a disproportionately large part of that application. So I, I go back and ask all those who say it wasn't important, then why did you use it? If you didn't need it, why did you use it and why did you lead with it? So let's get let's strip away the politics and take Trump out of this so we can see clearly. At the core is the allegation that Carter Page, the hapless Carter Page, was acting, as the former director said tonight, as an agent of a foreign power. Is that a plausible claim? Do you think any reasonable person looking at the available evidence could reach a conclusion that Carter Page is a Russian agent? Um, it'd be tough. I think most people that have any experience with Carter Page, which would include the FBI, because they've interviewed him on a number of occasions, um, is, would you be more likely to call him a clown than a spy? So what do you make and of I that? And I don't say it? that. I don't say that to be disparaging towards him. I mean, I spent a lot of time with him in a congressional committee room. Right. If anyone needed uh, his Fifth Amendment right to counsel, if anyone needed a lawyer while he was talking to Congress, it would have been Carter Page. I, I just don't, I mean, he, he's not James Bond. He's not Jason Bourne. He's, it's sad, actually. So if our top law enforcement official can say with a straight face on live television that Carter Page is a foreign spy and represents a threat to American national security, he's lying, it sounds like. Well, I, I don't quarrel with the FBI wanting to run out a lead. I mean, I, I'm probably biased to, well, I am biased towards law enforcement. Go ahead and run out the lead. Uh, the, the, the challenge then becomes when you are going to spy on an American citizen, it needs to be more than a lead. You need to have probable yeah. cause and make all proper representations to the court. Uh, the other thing I will tell you, Tucker, that I learned tonight is Jim Comey has a definition of the word leak that no one else no. has. Yeah. What he says is a leak is what the rest of us call a felony. Yeah. Uh, leaking is disclosing a confidential conversation, which is exactly what he did. He came off as much oilier in this interview than I've ever seen him. I thought it was deeply revealing, and I'm, and I'm glad you shared uh, my reaction to it. Mr. Chairman, thank you for coming on. Yes, sir. Thank you. During that interview, we're talking about Comey also had this to say about fired FBI director, deputy director, rather, Andrew McCabe. Watch. Yeah, I still believe he stood tall. He represented himself under and the organization under tremendous stress during that period after I was fired. But I read the IG report as you did. It concluded that Andy had not been candid. This is what accountability looks like in the Should Justice he be Department. Prosecuted? 
That's not for me to say. I, well, as wait, a, you said it in the Clinton case. Well, I was then the director of the FBI. Which I'm a, I'm a was not your citizen. role at that Private moment. citizens should not be calling for the prosecution of people in a case they're not involved in. But I do believe, as it routinely happens, the IG will likely refer it or has referred it to a U.S.